Item number, SCP-2650. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-2650-1 instances are contained in individual Class II humanoid containment cells in Site-42. Each cell is furnished with a standard child-sized bed and a wall-mounted television that plays only recorded broadcasts approved for pre-adolescence. Each instance has a physical deterrence device around its neck, which is to be activated remotely by monitoring guards should it become unruly. SCP-2650-A and -B are currently contained by themselves in an isolation containment cell in Site-42. One security camera is to observe SCP-2650-A and -B at all times. SCP-2650-B should be fed once per day with five standard D-class capsule rations using the rations transference device. Under no circumstances should any instance of SCP-2650-1 be allowed within 100 meters of SCP-2650-A or -B. No personnel are allowed within SCP-2650-B's containment chamber. The families of instances of SCP-2650-1 have been supplied with cover story 35 IOTA, Kidnapping and Murder. All external containment efforts are currently focused around suppressing news media involving SCP-2650-B or any instance of SCP-2650-1. Description SCP-2650-A is a ventriloquist dummy of unknown brand and make with a tan-colored face, blue eyes, and red markings on its cheeks. SCP-2650-A is dressed in generic red gloves, blue jeans, and a plaid, red and green sweater with a center pocket. A fake monocle is clipped to SCP-2650-A's left eye, and a blue plastic top hat rests upon its head. The top hat can be removed, revealing a hinge plate that can be opened to reveal the cranial area. Within SCP-2650-A's cranial area is a human brain and brainstem, assumed to belong to SCP-2650-B. Proposals to remove and more closely study the brain have been forbidden out of concern that removal will irreparably damage SCP-2650-A and -B. The brain has not shown any signs of decay since initial containment. SCP-2650-B is the body of former ventriloquist and magician. SCP-2650-B is biologically normal, but has a wooden sphere approximately 25 centimeters in diameter within its skull in place of a brain. SCP-2650-B perpetually holds SCP-2650-A with its left hand. Despite lacking a brain and brainstem, all life functions of SCP-2650-B proceed normally, and it is able to speak, breathe, eat, and move. The only major differences between it and a live human is that SCP-2650-B neither appears to feel pain, nor has its body aged or decayed in the years it has been contained. SCP-2650-B refuses to release SCP-2650-A from its grasp and only communicates through SCP-2650-A. Normally, SCP-2650-B will sit cross-legged in the center of the cell, usually asleep, but occasionally conversing with itself through SCP-2650-A. If a person passes within two meters of SCP-2650-B's line of sight while it is awake, it will invite them to watch it perform. During a performance, SCP-2650-B will engage in discussion with SCP-2650-A. The performance utilizes crude humor, magic tricks, and other acts geared toward pre-adolescence, although it focuses on more adult themes such as coping with mental illness, abusive relationships, or drug abuse with the occasional adult joke. Following a performance, if there are pre-adolescents in the audience, SCP-2650-B will ask one at random if they would like to learn ventriloquism. If it receives a positive answer, SCP-2650-B will escort the child to a secluded area. If followed by an adult, SCP-2650-B will simply produce a non-anomalous ventriloquist dummy from its pocket, give the child a short lesson on ventriloquism, then let the child leave with the ventriloquist dummy. 
If a loan, SCP-2650-B will convert the child into an instance of SCP-2650-1. The mechanism of conversion is unknown. Instances of SCP-2650-1 are various pre-adolescent children between the ages of 5 and 9 with their own instances of SCP-2650-A. They share the same neurological abnormality as SCP-2650-B, but their behavior is markedly different. Instances of SCP-2650-1 initially show no difference in their normal behavior, except for occasionally practicing ventriloquism. As time goes by, instances of SCP-2650-1 will communicate more frequently through their dummies. Eventually, they will cease to speak by themselves, only speaking through the dummies. This is the only behavioral change made by instances of SCP-2650-1, who will otherwise act like non-anomalous pre-adolescents. Addendum, Incident 2650-1 Prior to Incident 2650-1, all instances of SCP-2650-1 were unruly, frequently attempting to damage furnishings within their cells, making loud requests for their immediate family, and necessitating the implementation of deterrence protocols. On blank, 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 security footage showed SCP-2650-B standing up and looking at the security camera. It then proceeded to converse with SCP-2650-A while keeping eye contact on the camera. During the conversation, all instances of SCP-2650-1 immediately ceased other activities to sit on their beds and stare at the security camera in their cells. Audio log, SCP-2650-B. Cheap! I'm so bored here! We've been grounded for practically ever. I'm starting to think the hotel owners don't like us. I know it's boring, Willie, but you're a big boy now. You're all big boys and girls. You need to be patient sometimes. Patience is the greatest virtue of them all. But um bump 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 patience is the best. You can wait around for all the rest. There's always time to make a rhyme. But sitting quietly isn't a crime. All you have to do is sit and smell the roses. It isn't like you have a form of halitosis. Patience is the best. You can wait around for all the rest. Sit down and wait your turn. If you do, you won't be spurned. Relax, kick back, don't have a heart attack. Patience is the best. You can wait for all the rest. You're right. I can see what you mean about patience. But you know, I feel like our wonderful little ventriloquists have been patient for a really long time. It's been years and years. That's true, Willie. But they must be patient for a little longer. I'm asking them from the bottom of my heart to be patient just a little longer. And for all I've done for them, I'm sure they won't mind waiting. We're getting antsy. It's been years and years and we're practically grounded in here. I haven't seen my girl in ages. You looked at your hand five minutes ago. <laughs> but I'm serious. Please, everyone, listen to me. You know I love you. I certainly love you more than your parents. You know what would have happened if I hadn't rescued you all? They would have taken away your best friends. Zara, Peppy, Abby, Jerome, Walt, Kenzie, all of them. Your parents would have gotten rid of them. And then they would have gotten rid of you. What? Why would our families ever do that? Because they think your friendship is weird or strange. And if there's one thing parents love above all else, it's normal. If there's anything they see that isn't normal, they get rid of it. You see, we have to stay here for now while I find us a new place to live. Because if we go back, they'll separate us. And I love you too much to let them do that. And I know you love your friends too much to let them do that. If they're too silly to recognize our friendship, then I'm certainly never going back. If my parents can't understand that you're my best friend, then fooey to them. I'll stay here as long as I have to. Because you're my friend. 
And if you don't have your friends, then what do you have? Nothing, Willie. You have nothing. So please be patient, my little ventriloquists. I promise you that we will find a place where good little boys, good little girls, and their good little friends can live without anybody trying to take them away. And that is a pinky promise. Pinky promise? Pinky promise. Since incident 2650-1, all instances of SCP-2650-1 have been noticeably more subdued, and deterrence device activation rates have been reduced by 65%.